Good morning, everyone again. So how did yesterday's exercises work? Did you manage to get out a B out of your food? With the D sound in the beginning, well, you have one more day to try, but I will help you with your breathing today. I'm speaking to you this time. You might have seen it on TV, especially for the new uh, year's concerts. Behind me, this is the golden hall of the Musikverein in Vienna, one of the temples of music. And it's also known for its acoustics, just like the Berlin Philharmonic. It has a very, very good acoustic. So this is also why uh, its home concert orchestra love to play in it. The famous Vienna Philharmonic. And this time is not easy even for them. So they have expanded their hashtag Europe music of the day to over 20 of these famous concert halls in Europe. And you can listen to them on their Facebook pages or just looking for hashtag Europe music of the day. And every night at 8 p.m. European time, um, they are podcasting beautiful concerts that they have had in the different houses. Um, yesterday we had Clara Schumann's uh, uh, piano concert from Stockholm. So this is also really interesting to listen to. Anyway, let's get to our business, becoming flutists in 14 days. Well, this is day four. And on day four, we don't want you to uh, faint. This is why we need some more information about how to breathe, what to use, what not to use. Well, actually we can use anything that we need to breathe. So breathing is quite normal. We usually breathe in, but in everyday life, we just use chest breathing, the upper part, which expands and goes out. This is not enough to play the flute. We cannot control such a short air stream. It's like a bow for us, right? It's like the bow for the violinists. We need our airstream and it needs to be long so we can control it. We can, um, well, uh, we can vary the pressure, the uh, um, volume, and also the velocity. This is what actually makes us flutists, if we can do that. So how to do that? We need to breathe in very deeply. Abdominal breathing, but even lower, right? Even our pelvic zone is uh, employed in this active breathing that we need to do. So how can we train that? If you sit back on your chair and you put your uh, backbone against the chair, you need to feel that when you breathe, you move away from it. So you expand, your ribs can expand. They are not fixed. Like the three lower ones are actually really, really uh, flexible. Uh, they are bones, but they are not uh, fixed. So you can move them outward and you should be doing that on in the front, on the sides and in the back as well. But the air does not only go where the lungs are, the lungs can expand lower as well. And there's a membrane beneath the lungs on top of your stomach, uh, which is called the diaphragm. Uh, this is a muscle that goes down when you breathe uh, in and pushes all the content of your stomach to where it can go. This is how and why your belly expands. It should not only expand into the front, to the sides, but also into the back. You can control if you're doing that by leaning against a wall or a chair. So you can feel that you actually grow and put the air, everything it can go. It can uh, put many more liters inside if you use the lower part of your chest, like the abdomen and the pelvic zone as well. The diaphragm goes down and the lungs expand to everywhere. This is what we, why we say, breathe into the stomach. Of course, the air does not go into the stomach, but all the things, the organs, and everything that is inside needs to go somewhere so the lungs can expand, right? And this is breathing in. And we need to get a feeling for that to breathe in very deeply and know where the air can go. Try to inhale, and when you think you can't go any further, you can, you inhale again. You stop, and you exhale. This kind of breathing is to make space for air and to get a feeling of where it can go. 
but for in this kind of medical breathing, so to say, exhaling is relaxation. But that's not the thing uh, for the flutist. For a flutist, exhaling is actually what we used to play. So for us, it's the most active part. We need to exhale in a way that we can use our air to produce beautiful sounds, sounds of the flute. And to do that, we need to be able to control it. So we need to breathe deeply, have a long air stream, a long bow inside of us, and play with it. How can we train that? Well, very easily. You can do that anywhere on the bus. Maybe your neighbor will look at you in a weird way. <laughs> anyway, you, you can do that just in classrooms, wherever you are. You uh, inhale as deep as you can, as deeply as you can. And then you choose a consonant, F, S, P, whatever you like. Or S, or Sh, or F which is actually with the most resistance, so you can use it for a longer time. And you try to exhale in a steady airflow for 20 seconds. Can you do that? Let's see, oh, I don't have a watch here. Well, we, we will try. And so on. This is something you can train from today, which will help you not only to relax and control your breathing, but also to play the flute in a much better way, just right from the start. Uh, when you're able to do that 20 seconds or even more, you can try to put in little bumps of air, like the same consonant you're using. And on every second you go, and so on. And every time you push out the air with the same consonant, try to expand your belly to the outside, okay, to do that movement. This will help us later on as well. So you need to control your diaphragm so it does not come back up immediately into relaxation when you exhale, but that it comes back up slowly and controls the airflow. Okay, this is what we need. Actually, it would be the best thing if you imagine it to go down even while you exhale and not come up. This will even control your airflow in a better way. Well, these are uh, quite easy, um, and but not so much fun maybe. I got another idea if you have siblings or people you want to play table football with. This helps as well okay, with playing the flute. You just take a piece of paper, this one, into a little ball, sit on two sides of the table, don't use your hands, just your breath, and you try to make gold on the other side of the, of the table. So if it goes down, you win, and so on. And this helps you control the angle, control the pressure, control the power in a very fun way. I still like to play that. Uh, against all my students and some of them actually win. <laughs> so this is really uh, something very fun to do. When you're lying in bed at night and you're not sure uh, yet about the breathing technique, you can also lie down at day. <laughs> you can put a book or something heavy on the lower part of your um, abdomen, the pelvic zone. Try to raise it while uh, you inhale. And then while you exhale, the 20 seconds exhale, try to keep it up there. This means you keep the membrane, the diaphragm low, and it doesn't come back up immediately. You keep it low, you keep all the contents of your stomach and organs from the lower part uh, of your abdomen low, you don't, below. Okay, you just control the movement upwards from the membrane, the diaphragm. Um, this is really, really important. This is the basic of playing a wind instrument, especially the flute. If you can manage that, you will get a beautiful sound 
nice quality, good phrasing, um, and also a natural vibrato that doesn't come from the throat, but from all the cavities that you open up with good breathing, breathing, sorry, and uh, to produce a nice sound and have resonance in your body. So this is it for today. Have fun breathing. If you're dizzy, sit down. <laughs> and please don't faint. Um, and then try again to play the B sound on your flute like we taught yesterday. And try to do the same thing. Keep it for 20 seconds. Keep it steady. It will be very hard. It will be very hard. Try a few seconds. Keep it steady. And then try to push in the um, the blows of the of the diaphragm that we just said with the consonant you use. Usually you should use the D when playing the flute, okay? But the F is easier to get started. Uh, not playing the flute, but doing breathing exercises. After playing the flute, I forgot yesterday. Please don't ever forget. The flute is humid maybe even uh, wet so please clean it take your cleaning rod put um a cotton tissue like you went to your grandfathers have a man ones because they are bigger uh, around it and push it through the flute paying attention to um touch the keys in the right way just like we taught the first lesson and when you go into the head joint and you clean it you will get resistance at a certain point. Don't push uh, further because there's a cork inside which is important to determine the length of the flute so that uh, intonation is given in between all the notes, the sounds you make. So if you push it, you make the flute longer and intonation is gone. So do not push against it. Uh, when you arrive at the resistance, just gently turn it around and get it back out again. And then put your flute in the flute case. Never put it in wet. Um, I have had students who came back with uh, green flutes. Well, they were not very expensive, of course, but um, please do not do that because it will not be uh, nice to play the flute again if it stays in there uh, wet for a week or two, okay? So clean it, put it back in the case, and have fun the next day. See you tomorrow.